My name is Nick Ventralakis, and I'm the chairman of Develop Springfield. And uh, I'm thrilled to have you all with us today uh, as we officially virtually cut the ribbon and sort of finalize the Springfield Innovation Center that's been a, a long time coming. So thank you all for being here. The Springfield Innovation Center was viewed as a, a hub to spur entrepreneurship here in the city of Springfield. Uh, partnering with our friends at Valley Venture Mentors, looking at them as sort of the anchor tenant of this facility, um, but really as an overall complex to drive entrepreneurship, drive innovation, and bring new businesses to life here in the city of Springfield and help grow uh, the economy. And the good news is that that is exactly what this uh, project is doing. Uh, in addition to that, it really aligns to develop Springfield's mission, which is to take blighted, underutilized properties that are key to revitalization and bringing them back online. And I think that this over $7 million project is an exact example of what develop Springfield is trying to do, uh, not only here downtown, but across the city uh, and in innovative ways. So we are just so excited uh, to be here. Uh, as I said, this was a, a more than $7 million project um, with Valley Venture Mentors here as our anchor tenant, and we're so pr uh, pleased to have them here. Uh, we also have an exciting uh, tenant right adjacent uh, through our friends at Berkshire Bank called RevX. Uh, I won't do it justice to describe it, but I'll try to just briefly say that it's a, an innovative concept uh, from a bank to help uh, stimulate entrepreneurship and get folks that are coming out of facilities like VVM uh, more into the banking realm and with technical support and all the different things. And I'm sure, Jim, I've screwed that up, but I'll, that's, my, that's my best attempt. So it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful fit uh, for this Springfield Innovation Center. And we also have a tenant uh, upstairs who is an entrepreneur, J.D. Cole Productions, and we're uh, pleased, I don't know if J.D. is here, but um, we're, we're, oh, hey, how are you? We are thrilled to have him with us and uh, as, a, as a tenant in this enterprise. Uh, we're working hard to complete sort of the second phase directly behind us, uh, which is another building in the Trinity block. Uh, we've got a roof on, we've got some infrastructure done, and we're, we're getting close to uh, finalizing a tenant for that space as well. But what you're going to see here, and you can see it in some of the slides later on, is uh, taking a building, again, that was blighted, boarded, uh, caused a lot of different problems for, for the mayor and, and his team, um, and turning it into a center for entrepreneurship uh, and a hub for growth and development in the city of Springfield. So, so we're just thrilled, um, thrilled to be here today. Um, so on cue, let me uh, recognize a few of our elected officials who uh, just, just walked in. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. Uh, Representative Carlos Gonzalez. <laughs> Senator Jim Welch. And Senator Eric Lesser. Thank you all for being here and joining us today. So we wouldn't be here without the tremendous outpouring of support that we received from the community and from the leadership that you see represented here on this stage. And I do need to highlight a few individuals specifically later on. And uh, if, if, I, if I omit anyone or if I don't uh, include anyone to the level that they want it to be included, I apologize. Uh, it is just we have such a, such a long list of supporters that I'm going to do my best to do that. But, Everybody that's in this room is here for a reason, and that's because you're a part of this community. You support Develop Springfield, you support BVM, uh, you support this project. So thank you all for being here, and thank you, and give yourselves a round of applause. <clears throat> so first, uh, first and foremost, I want to recognize Congressman Neal. Um, Congressman Neal has been a, a supporter of Develop Springfield since its beginning. But he's been a supporter of this project as well since its beginning. Uh, and I can tell you without, without question, we would not be here today if it were not for the more than $1.1 million in federal tax credits that this project received. It's simply impossible. And, and not only did the congressman help secure the tax credits, he helped make sure that the tax credits were here in the first place through his work on the Ways and Means Committee as a member and now as its chairman. Uh, he has been advocating for tax credits, understanding and recognizing the importance of those credits for economic development in cities like Springfield 
and across his district in Western Massachusetts. So, Congressman, thank you and thanks, Nick. Yours. Thanks for done. So, so, congratulations to uh, Nick Fintralakis, uh, who I'd like to thank a few years ago helped start his career in my campaign organization. And uh, a terrific friend along the way he's been, but I also think to develop Springfield. What a nice moment this is. It's a culmination of a lot of hard work, and uh, these, certainly there's, there are these in-between events which the public doesn't have a chance to offer the same gaze to. Frequently, you're there for the uh, opening, and then you're there for the ribbon cutting, but in between, there's an awful lot of hard work that's frequently unglamorous. And I think that's part of the challenge, making sure that somebody was willing to oversee it, I think was the role that Nick uh, once again prominently played. And always a good word for the, our fine mayor, Dominic Sarno, who understands clearly uh, the whole role of innovation and creativity. And one of the things that we were able to do here, uh, when I look back at it, was uh, I was in a bit of a pitched battle with the, at that time, the majority in the House over what to do about three tax credits. The low-income housing tax credit, which really is not a low-income housing tax credit because after the recession it became more about a middle-income housing tax credit, and the historic tax credit, but also new markets tax credits. And I went back and forth with them, maintaining that dialogue and friendship and insisting that they not let those three opportunities fall by the wayside. And they insisted they had to because it didn't beat the budget score. Well, with some opportunity and uh, I think the small work of a miracle, we saved these tax items. Now, what's important about a tax credit? It generates behavior economically that ordinary financing, because of the challenges that come with gap financing, might not be able to embrace. So oftentimes, you will hear people say, well, the numbers have to work. And if the numbers don't work, they turn their back on the initiative. I, I say to my friends all of the time, particularly on the Democratic side, employers are not going to hire one more person than they need. And you can't tell them that they're going to do this or do that. They're going to do it based upon what? An investment and a return. So the historic tax credit in particular allows for that opportunity for private investment based upon the idea that there will be a public good and a reasonable return on the investment. I'm fine with all of it. Now, the broader conversation I also think is very important. Some years ago, I had a chance to meet Walter Isaacson. And I've been a real fan of his work over many, many years. He's a terrific biographer. And I think I was with him in Colorado. And everybody should read his biography of Steve Jobs. Not the easiest personality, for sure, but time and again, every time Jobs was down for the count of nine, he had the ability to pick himself back up. And he had one of the best lines that I re can recall. He simply said, we've got to show people what they're going to want. How profound is that? And his ability to do design on the laptop changed the world. And now, listening to the head of Alphabet over the last couple of days in the Financial Times and in the quotes in this morning's New York Times, he was in Davos and he said that what's going to happen with artificial intelligence will be more important than the invention of fire. How is that for an all-encompassing statement? And innovation and creativity is still a really important part of the American story. Nobody does yet what we do with creativity in the world. But guess what? The Chinese are catching up. They used to take our technology replicated and sell it cheaper. And simply now, what they do is they compete. Now, they haven't caught up to us yet with computer chips. That's for sure. But they're making great headway. So for the people that are slightly younger than me here today. Don't let anybody tell you that globalization is going away. It's not. You watch how money is transferred in international markets. You watch how the creative economy plays out across the world and the globe. And also the economic success that the coastal regions of the country are having in urban areas because they attract top-notch talent to live there because of what it is you're doing right here with innovation and creativity. We've just come off. Uh, a never-can-happen moment. We were told when Speaker Pelosi tasked me with negotiating 
a hemispheric trade agreement, that it couldn't happen. In that hemispheric trade agreement, USMCA, we were able to get 193 Democrats to vote for a trade agreement and 192 Republicans. Only 42 members of the House voted against the trade agreement. And you know what in the United States Senate? 90 members of the United States Senate voted for that trade agreement. So we built in, thank you, Mayor. We built in consumer protections, the right to organize. We were able to build in environmental issues. But most importantly, we were able to convince, as I did over breakfast in Mexico City, with the president of Mexico, Lopez Obrador, he canceled his plane flight because he thought the negotiation was going so well. It didn't start out very well over breakfast. I thought there was going to be a lot of indigestion. But it ended up working out fine. And he subscribed in the end to what we wanted, the right to organize in Mexico and not have the government control private unions. And in Canada, when I met with the Prime Minister Trudeau, it went swimmingly well and then spent four hours with Minister Freeland negotiating what is now a very important hemispheric trade agreement that I hope will and likely be signed next week. Why is that important? And I'm going to close with this. The economies of the world are now interconnected. Say what you want, there are 500 million consumers in Europe. 500 million consumers in Europe. And here's the statistic that young people really need to pay attention to. 95% of the consumers in the world live outside of the United States. So when you talk about Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, they know you can compete. But if you think that we're going to be Luddites, if you think that we're going to turn our back on internationalism and globalization, we're making a terrible mistake. The idea is to make sure that the path to growth allows an opportunity for every member of the American family to participate. We've got a great research university right up the street, UMass, stunning community colleges that have become more and more important to the economy because people can't afford $75,000 a year to attend a private school in the region. And I call that up to you because the challenge of what you're going to do right here on Bridge Street, which 50 years ago was the retailing center of Springfield. The small businessmen and women on this very corridor, it was remarkable what they accomplished. And you're replicating that in a sense today, but in a different way. So we've moved in America from an agrarian economy to a manufacturing economy, and now a balance between agrarian manufacturing and an innovative economy. So this is a really nice piece of work. And I also want one other name I think that needs to be acknowledged here today. Uh, when you called me and asked me to get Bill Galvin's attention, the Secretary of State, because he's the custodian of historic tax credits in the state, fair to say not an easy personality, and, but an old friend of mine. And uh, surely he came out and made the announcement. I think there was almost a million dollars of state tax credits as well. Put your hands together for yourselves, and thanks from the United States of America. Stole my thunder, Congressman. I was going to recognize the Secretary in a, in a bit. Um, I did also want to say, did anyone have a treat out front from uh, Granny's Baking Table? Pretty good stuff, right? So they are right across the street, right across the street on Bridge Street. Uh, they were the recipient of a lease at local grant that Develop Springfield is administering uh, from Mass Development. So another, another great tie-in here. And please uh, patronize that organization. It's a wonderful, wonderful spot. Um, next, I'd like to ask uh, Mayor Sarno, the people's mayor, to join me for a few words. Um, mayor Sarno has really been just a stalwart supporter of Develop Springfield again since our inception. Um, he recognized the need to have an economic development arm that focused on the city of Springfield that the city could partner with very directly and overtly on projects like this and many others. And the city provided funding for this project in a variety of ways, funding for Develop Springfield in a variety of ways, funding for other projects across the city. Uh, we couldn't ask for a better friend and a champion of economic development. And I think the largest economic development expansion and investment in the city's history over the past decade. So, Mayor. Thank you. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. First of all, I apologize for being late. We're bringing more money uh, back to the 
City of Springfield, Lieutenant Governor Polito was here and we had IT money uh, coming in and diversity money in the workforce uh, with uh, Tech Foundry and I want to thank Lieutenant Governor Polito. I want to thank my local delegation who partner uh, with me and I want to thank my uh, city team, Tim Sheehan, uh, Brian Connors, who's on this project for many, many years, and the private investors. And I want to thank uh, uh, Congressman Chairman Neal uh, because uh, the tax credits were key, uh, were key. And uh, Secretary Galvin is a friend, but you are correct. Uh, you have to deal with the Secretary in a certain way, and we appreciate Richie uh, being able to facilitate uh, that. When I took over as mayor now well over a dozen years ago, uh, there was really no focus on the city of Springfield. Uh, Springfield was really uh, uh, looked upon. Uh, Brian, you were here at the time. Uh, second, not even second, third, fourth. It was the old adage was, uh, what do you expect at Springfield? We've changed that dynamic. It's why not Springfield? And what I found, and I appreciate uh, Nick Venterlakis has worn many hats for me and the board of directors are also here from Develop Springfield is that we had some difficult projects. And any developer, he or she, that does a good job, deserves to make a dollar. So I couldn't ask developers or put out RFPs or RFQs on difficult properties if we did not do uh, the legwork, the, the public investment, which Congressman Neal is uh, so apt at, uh, and take these difficult properties, take these difficult buildings, take these difficult vacant lots, that needed to have some tender loving care to put them on uh, the market. So developers all of a sudden would say, let me take a second look at the city of Springfield. So we formed this unique public and private partnership. And my, uh, uh, my uh, clarion call was, Springfield first, baby. You look here to make it happen. So now you, you fast forward. And when you think of the city of Springfield, uh, it's steeped in history and tradition. If you go down to the Lyman and Marywood Museum of Springfield History, Springfield was the hub of innovation, invention. 50 to 52 innovations and inventions. So in a way, it's back to the future. And we're creating a new dynamic, a new economy uh, here. And it creates a good four-letter word. And for your skiers, it's not snow. It's jobs, J-O-B-S. And that's what any urban mayor in America, he or she, needs to continue to knock down and conquer the vicious cycle of poverty and public safety uh, issues. So out of here comes creation, innovation, and the opportunity for people, no matter what background, to be able to provide for themselves, their families, and be a good community partner. One other thing I'd like to say. And God rest his soul, Tommy Menino, the mayor of Boston, when he was in town, I think it was six or eight months before he passed away, and he said to me, he goes, you know, Don, they sort of laughed at me when I said I was going to create an innovation district in South Boston area over there. They laughed at me. Never happened. You look at what has happened there. We are looking to do the same thing here in the city of Springfield. So whether it's through uh, uh, Develop Springfield, uh, through the, all the other innovation entrepreneurships that we have. So we go back to the future, where we were many, many years ago, that we will continue to stimulate and create and innovate the new economy and put people to work, investment in the city of Springfield. So the public and private partnerships have worked out very, very well from the federal level, state level, local level, because it translates concretely in the jobs, revenue, and then that intangible of all of a sudden you start to feel good about your city. You start to feel good about the city of Springfield. So Develop Springfield has played a key, key uh, role, and we're looking to take on more properties and, and initiatives. And we welcome uh, this eclectic mix of individuals you all are to the city of Springfield. Bring your ideas, bring your innovations, bring your inventions, bring your jobs, bring your money to the city of Springfield, and we will continue to work with you and roll out the red carpet. Maybe I can't give you 10 out of 10 things, but maybe I can give you six, seven, eight out of 10 things. 
So we're open for business. And again, as I opened uh, with, the moniker used to be, geez, you know, what do you expect at Springfield? The moniker now is, why not Springfield? Get on board. He'll like that with the Union Station stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mayor. So um, I do want to uh, do some recognition. And I said everybody in this room is here for a reason and, and been involved in this project. But I do, I do need to recognize some, some individuals and organizations today for their support. Uh, this, this project was a labor of love. That's a nice way to say it. Um, That's a real nice way to say it. <laughs> a few delays, a few challenges, as we always run into when we're dealing with historic properties, blighted properties, um, challenging financial uh, strategies when it comes to economic development in urban centers. And so we needed a lot of help, and we got a lot of help. And so I want to recognize some of the folks that, that helped us. Um, first and foremost, um, on the grant side, mass development. I know Brandon Braxton is here. <laughs> mass development provided a significant grant for this project. Um, mass Mutual, uh, unfortunately, I don't see anybody from Mass Mutual, but Mass Mutual was key. Uh, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, in a multitude of ways, obviously through mass development, but in addition to that, uh, Senator Lesser had filed an earmark. Uh, Senator Welch and uh, Representative Gonzalez and other members of the delegation supported that, and so there was a significant earmark that came through for this project, so thank you. The Davis Foundation, uh, who I don't see anyone here from the Davis Foundation, but the Davis Foundation was instrumental. And as I said earlier, the city of Springfield, uh, through the CDBG program and other programs, Tim, Kathy, um, others, so, so thank you. And there's a, another, and, a, and several other funders that, that participated. Thank you all. Um, on the financing front, again, mass development. Um, Brandon said this was fun. I know, I know that that was sarcasm when he, when he said that. Um, but I can tell you that this was a very complicated project, and Mass Development uh, stepped in and really uh, served as our anchor to, to get this project financed correctly, so Mass Development. <clears throat> Berkshire Bank. Jim is here with Berkshire Bank. Uh, not only did, yep, not only was Berkshire instrumental in our financing, but also in the tax credit purchase that needed to happen in order to monetize to make this project happen. Um, and as I mentioned, not only are they providing financing, providing tax or buying tax credits, they're also going to be a tenant in this space right next door with the, the RevX space. So a huge, huge help and thank you to Berkshire. Uh, Common Capital. Uh, Common Capital is here today. I know Raymond is here and Sam was here and um, Chris Sykes before, before that. Um, Common Capital was also uh, an instrumental uh, financing component. Uh, we talked about the tax credit. The congressman, again, thank you uh, for, on the federal side. Uh, on the state side, um, as the congressman mentioned, Secretary Galvin uh, unfortunately couldn't be here today, but Secretary Galvin was, was a huge help to us. We truly appreciate his support, and we appreciate also the support of our state delegation, uh, who obviously makes sure that those tax credits are, are supported and delivered here in Springfield. So thank you. Thank you all very much. To the developed Springfield Board of Directors, uh, many are here today. Could the Board of Directors please stand who are here, please, board members? Thank you. Uh, and I especially want to just recognize Mindy Phelps, who is on our executive committee along with Jose Claudio, and Jeff Sullivan, uh, who devoted a lot of time and energy into making this happen. And Jeff, um, I don't know how he does it, but he knows a few things about numbers and finances, in case you didn't know that. Uh, Jeff has spent a lot of time making the numbers work on this project on our behalf. Jeff, thank you for Thanks, all that Jeff. you did to make this happen. I also want to recognize some former staff members that uh, aren't here today, but Ben Murphy, Danny McCann, and Paige Thayer, who were staff members at Develop Springfield, who did a tremendous amount of work. I also want to recognize um, some consultants that we brought on to assist with this project. Jeff Daly, who I don't believe is here today. Uh, and most recently, Chris Russell in the Springfield Business Improvement District. 
our uh, our relatively recent relationship with the with the business improvement district in terms of providing management support to, um, to management to develop Springfield has been wildly successful. Chris, thank you. Thank Michelle, the team, Bridget, everybody. Appreciate all that you've done uh, to help us get to the next level, and we look forward to continuing. <laughs> Valley Venture Mentors, Scott, yeah. Kristen, there he is. thank you all for your your teamwork, partnership, patience, uh, blood, sweat, tears uh, for being here. So thank you all very much for your partnership. And um, I just want to take one more minute to talk about some developed Springfield projects that are underway uh, that we've been successful with and what's coming up. Um, <clears throat> a couple of our success stories. So you all remember the beautiful River Inn site yeah. on State Street, maybe? 20 years ago. That time. So um, the River Inn site is cleaned up, and now there's a, a Pride station and store that's going in, cleaning up that critical corner on State Street. Uh, it takes a significant eyesore and blight from the community and turns it into a productive corner. We're very proud of that project. Uh, another project is on Dwight and Carew. Uh, there was an abandoned uh, building there, a, a church, unfortunately, but it was abandoned, uh, boarded for many years. Um, that is now going to be a medical office building by private developers um, that is going to put tax dollars to work. Uh, and, and put taxes on taxes on the roll. Uh, Dallas Springfield played a role in assembling that property, demolishing, cleanup, and getting it prepared for private development. 83 Maple Street, which is complete and occupied, um, great project. Uh, soon to be, we're going to be completing 77 Maple to complete the Lower Maple Business Park, which is a part of that 83 Maple Street complex. Um, we are in the process right now of stabilizing the gun block which is the oldest uh, commercial building in the city of Springfield on the corner of State and Walnut. Um, we, are, we have crews underway stabilizing that property to get it prepared for better use. We are uh, State Street Corridor, the near and dear to the congressman's heart. Um, we are developing some quality single family homes in six corners in the area that was uh, devastated by the tornado, fitting into those beautiful homes that are on Central Street now, partnering with the city on their grant program to develop some single family homes there. So we're excited about that. And then we continue to focus our efforts on the State Street Corridor, as well as the North End in the city of Springfield, where we're hopeful to get some projects happening uh, in addition to the ones that I mentioned already. So to that end, uh, you didn't think you were going to get here without us asking for something, right? So uh, all, of that, all of those projects that I talked about and the operations of Develop Springfield take resources. Uh, many of you in this room participate in our partners program and support our partners, partners program through funding, and many of you are listed here. Thank you. Uh, but we need your continued support. Uh, so you'll be receiving phone calls and letters and emails about our partners program in the next coming weeks. Uh, we hope that you will continue to support the good work that you've heard about here today and that I've mentioned. Uh, it is really important to the city of Springfield, and we're very proud of that work, and we really need your help. So we hope that we can count on you to do that. So to our delegation, did, uh, did you want to offer any comments and come forward and be recognized? So sick and Representative Gonzalez. Right. This, this is right up your alley. <laughs> well, thank you, uh, Nick, and thank you for everything that you have done in leading uh, Develop Springfield. Again, this is the 10th Hampton District. I strongly always uh, say that this is the heart and soul of Western Massachusetts, downtown Springfield. And thanks to the leadership of uh, Mayor Sarno, uh, Springfield has come back. And it's not only about uh, folks that are here in Springfield, it's about Western Massachusetts, because as goes Springfield, goes Western Massachusetts. To our congressman, uh, no greater congressman, uh, pound for pound, the greatest congressman in the United States of America. I to call them up to the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> and now as the chairman of Ways and Means, um, definitely uh, a, a big pride and joy for us here in, in Massachusetts. But as I travel the country, or even abroad, uh, when they hear that I'm from Springfield, Massachusetts, oh, you're from uh, Congressman Neal's district. And I said, yes. Thanks, Congress. But uh, thank you for your leadership. And again, this is uh, 
what it's all about. It's making uh, small businesses, micro businesses, what I always call and champion. And again, these are projects and this is innovations. Uh, this innovation center here is uh, very close and near to my heart because it's something that how I started uh, my career in helping uh, small businesses develop and grow. And it's the key and essential component of downtown Springfield. But it's also the basic principle of where the small micro businesses are going to start to develop and grow and, and launch uh, bigger careers as we uh, try to find more employment opportunities, but also uh, making our small business owners become the employers of tomorrow. So thank you for the work that you do and continued success. And again, in the State House, we will continue to support these efforts. Thank you. Well, thank you, uh, thank you, Rep. Carlos, and of course, thank you, Congressman Neal, Mayor Sarno, Nick, and the whole um, uh, uh, Develop Springfield team. I, I just want to reiterate something that we said at the opening uh, of the or the ribbon cutting of the groundbreaking here to get the project started, which is, you know, Springfield was and the Pioneer Valley was kind of the original Silicon Valley. Uh, that's why George Washington put the armory here. Uh, that the monkey wrench was invented here. The first North American manufacturing of Rolls-Royce automobiles was done uh, here in Springfield. And up and down the Pioneer Valley, you still see that legacy of innovation, uh, in particular around manufacturing. Uh, and um, unfortunately, we know what happened, which is the economy changed, and Congressman Neal alluded to this, and a lot of the jobs and the opportunity left this region, left this valley. Uh, but what we've seen in recent years is a resurgence uh, and a reinvestment and a refocus on really what's been in our bloodstream around here for a very long time, which is inventing things uh, and bending the curve and creating a new future. And this building uh, is going to be at the center of that. I remember one of the very first meetings I took uh, when I, uh, shortly after I was elected in 2014 was with Jay Ash, uh, where we made clear that there was not going to be an economic development bill uh, without uh, the mass development funding uh, for this project. And we have a new economic development bill coming uh, this spring, and we're going to reiterate that it's not moving without the funding. And I think all of us uh, up here are going to support that because uh, the reality of it is, is there's been so much happening in Springfield that's so exciting, uh, but something that I think has the potential to be the most transformative is all of the people that are going to be gathering here, uh, the new ideas that are going to be created here, the patents uh, that are going to be created here, the businesses that are going to start here, and all the opportunity and the employment and the investment that's going to follow that. Uh, so it's just an incredible team effort, an incredible group of people uh, all along the way that we worked with. And it really is just getting started, uh, because this is going to be the spark, I think, that's going to ignite so much more for our city and for our region. So congratulations on a, on a great day. And thank you uh, for really the exceptional leadership that helped make it happen. Hey, can I just say, too, when you mentioned about the spark, uh, Springfield is making national lists in a good way now, Surge City and uh, uh, other lists about where to come uh, for business. So that's important to know, everything we're doing. Surge Cities, and we're making other lists as far as top ten lists about take a look at Springfield. That's because of all the work that we're doing here. Well, good morning, and uh, it's, <laughs> I'm Jim Welch, State Senator, represent the Hamden District, and uh, this is uh, right smack dab in the middle of the Hamden District, which is uh, really the heartbeat of, of Springfield. So it's proud, I'm very proud to be here. It was very comfortable sitting in those plush couches, and I see uh, Scott is certainly uh, enjoying it as well. Um, but the the highlight for today, and of course, want to. Uh, you know, thank uh, Congressman Neal. It's uh, it's always nice when you live in a district where you have one of the most powerful people in the country uh, representing you in Congress, and I think we can all uh, be thankful for that. And uh, you know, we we all reap the the, the benefits of uh, his ability to bring home resources to to Springfield in Western Massachusetts. And but none of this happens by accident, right? You know, we need. Uh, people in the right positions in Congress. We need uh, collaboration uh, with state and local government. And then when you look at the names of the companies and the individuals that have um, participated in making this a reality, um, collaboration is really what makes everything um, 
it really makes it fun. It makes it fun and it makes you, you feel as though you're really participating in a, in a community project. And I think this is a great example of that. And I can't wait to see, and I know great things have already come out of, uh, come out of here, but I can't wait to see all the great ideas and all the innovations that will continue to come out of uh, this great center. So pleasure to be here on behalf of the Massachusetts Senate, my colleagues, and uh, it's great to be here and be part of this, uh, this great celebration. So thank you. So thank you all very much. That concludes our formal program. There's scissors back here, but we're not going to do that. So if we can do a virtual uh, ribbon cutting. It's, uh, it's 2020. So thank you all for being here. Thank you all for your support. Thank you.